In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the mistake that I have made in the last year that has seriously been my greatest mistake and the lessons I have learned from it. So what I'm gonna be doing is talking about this mistake and also explaining how to avoid this mistake in the future so that hopefully my losses can become your gains. So you may be asking, what mistake have I made? Well, if you look at my investment portfolio, you can see that I am down roughly 40%. The uh, price as of close of Boohoo is actually incorrect and it's sitting at around 93 pence. So it's a little bit better than that, but again, it's hiding up a more gloomier portfolio anyway. So according to this, I'm down at least 12 grand. Now, what mistake have I made? Because you'd look at these and go, well, these are two fairly high quality companies, or you might not. But you're like, okay, well, hang on here. Look at the returns on my investments. I'm down by a fair chunk on both of them, including Boohoo, where I'm down about 45%, which again, I'm guessing based on the price. Anyway, so what mistake have I made? My portfolio is down 40%, and mainly most of this is in the last year. Well, I only hold two stocks. Is it lack of diversification? No, the mistake I made is not being able to appropriately value a business and therefore not knowing the price to buy this business at. For example, with Boohoo, I started buying that when there were first rumors of modern day slavery. I looked into the fundamentals of the business. I saw a company that was growing with 40% growth on their re uh, revenue over the last five years, consistently compounded each year. So it was very, very high growth. And subsequently, I was extremely interested in this investment. Therefore, when I saw that the shares had declined about 30 odd percent, they dropped from about four pound to about two pound 90, and then subsequently went even lower to about two pound 17. I bought the dip on about 270, thinking, yes, I'm really getting a good price here. And yeah, sure, I did fight the trend against that and subsequently lost out, but did end up making a profit after a year, but I didn't sell. Regardless, the mistake I made here is that lack of valuation. If at that point in time I'd looked at the shares and realized actually at £4 a share here, the valuation of Boohoo would mean that they were trading at 50 times the price to earnings, then maybe I wouldn't have invested and maybe I would have been a little bit more cautious with this investment. However, because I didn't value it, and I'll explain how I now value companies after this, I therefore sit on larger losses, which don't get me wrong, I believe I'm still holding high quality companies, but it means I'm underwater. Whereas if I had done the research and I'd really worked out the true valuation of this company, I wouldn't be sat so much underwater and I would therefore be better positioned to therefore have a position and subsequently be able to get better returns over the longer term with a better cost basis. As I do think this is a growing company and it's something that is gonna increase in price. So last year, for instance, my mistake was the fear of missing out, which was easy to work change. And again, I'll leave a card for that video at the top right of the video. But with valuations, how can you make sure that you're buying a company at a fair price? As coined by Warren Buffett, but suggested by Charlie Munger, it is better to buy a fantastic business at a fair price compared to a fantastically priced fair price business. And this is very much the case. You want to be buying quality. However, you do not want to be paying too much for it. Notice the use of fair. So how do we avoid making this mistake? So what can you do? Well, there's a few things you can look at. You can look at price to ratios. So I'm talking about price to earnings here. The price obviously compared to the earnings. So therefore, you would be checking the earnings per share and then calculating that based on the amount of the share price. And therefore, you could see a ratio there, whatever the multiple of the earnings towards the price is obviously your price to earnings. This is okay, but again, can be volatile. You never know. And some companies are priced at higher than others. For instance, a mining company on the FTSE 100 may be valued at seven or maybe even five times price to earnings, but then a company that's in a tech industry could be valued at 22 times price to earnings, and their, uh, their, their local competitors could be even higher of a valuation. So how do you identify this with price to earnings? Well, with price to earnings is a general rule that I like to use. And this is the idea that if the, the price to earnings is a number, they should be getting that right amount of growth. So for instance, if a company is valued at five times price to earnings, I would expect maybe a 5% annual return or growth on their earnings. Again, if a company is valued at 20 times price to earnings, I would expect that level of growth in their earnings and or revenue, depending if obviously they are profitable. Well, again, if they're not profitable, they're not gonna have a price to earnings ratio and you would look at things like price to sales. Again, I don't really like using price to sales as an effective valuation figure. But obviously, if you're looking at a company that is trading at 10 times price to sales, and they have low margins, or they're not even profitable, or they don't even have a free cash flow, then obviously I think there's a red flag there, and it should be definitely something you should be looking at, if not ruling out the investment flat 
out. But you can also value the company on other metrics and you can also value them based on the assets of the company. Now I do quite like using price to book ratio. However, this is very much favored to companies that are capital rich. This means the companies that are able to generate a high amount of earnings and then with that cash, they're able to reinvest it back into the business, into assets that are going to generate higher returns or obviously returns on the capital employed based on what they can do with it. However, this is also faulted because if you have a company that is paying a regular dividend which has a payout ratio of 60%, meaning 60% of their annual earnings get paid out is a surplus capital that then they don't really need to grow the business, they pay that out to shareholders. This is going to drain out their balance sheet and therefore they're going to have less cash available, which don't get me wrong, it's a good move for shareholders because they're invested for the dividend income, likely consistent and likely a fair valuation for it. However, when this dividend is taken away from the balance sheet, it means the price to book ratio is going to look less favorable, especially when combined if this company isn't growing by as much, you can lead to some quite high price to book ratios. And again, typically there's trends here between industries. For instance, one of my holdings, Games Workshop, is trading at roughly eight times price to book ratio, which is seen at a significant premium, but then they distribute truly surplus cash and the form of dividends to shareholders, and therefore, obviously, it becomes more difficult to value this company. So again, if you can't really look at that, you could look at enterprise value, for instance, where you're uh, valuing the price of the company of the equity minus the debt plus the cash, and you can work out there what the enterprise value is. However, you're looking at the market capitalization, and market capitalization is not something I like to look at because you've got that value, your enterprise value based on the shares of the market, right? You've got that market capitalization divided by your EBITDA, which is your earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization. But again, this is difficult because some companies are gonna have very favorable EBITDAs, but after depreciation, tax, and amortization, they have very, very small earnings. Whereas some companies might have very unfavorable EBITDAs, but they transfer into earnings very well. And in that situation, this is a company that actually looks a lot more favorable than it is. And so I really feel that to avoid this problem, you very much need to use a conglomerate of ideas. You need to understand this business like no other. You need to understand what each thing can be priced at. Now, this is a lot easier with smaller businesses because it's easier to total up the value of the assets of a smaller business. The larger a business gets, the more complicated it gets, and the more variance you can add to this. Yes, you can use discounted cash flow models where you're calculating the forecasted uh, cash flow of the business and subsequently discounting it over time, meaning that you're reducing the percentage of growth over the few years to get a very conservative, if possible, estimate. But truly, in the real world, unless it's a very predictable business, this is a very difficult thing to do. And I think a lot of people overcomplicate this process and therefore leading to these insane valuations that really will never come to light. Whereas I'm not trying to predict too far ahead in terms of earnings. So 12 months ahead, do I think they're going to be growing? They could be, they might not be, but ideally they will be. But over the very long term, do I think this is a company in a niche that will truly be growing? Do I think fast fashion is something that will be around in the future? I think so. People are lazy, people want convenience, and people want clothing quick to impress their friends, especially at cheap price. Therefore, over the next 10 to 20 years, this is a growing industry, in my opinion, and those that exploit it well will do extremely well. Whereas, in the short to medium term, the earnings of the company in the next 12 months may be looking less favorable. There's supply chain disruptions, there's high inflation, therefore meaning like a company like Boohoo's earnings are going to be squeezed. So yes, you can look ahead 12 months, but if you're then looking ahead 12 months and you're seeing that oh no there's squeezed earnings is bad inflation and all of this then again you're going to be calculating it based on the discounted cash flow of the margins that may only be temporary they may be able to pass this cost on to the consumers like many businesses will do and therefore they're effectively avoiding this and it's not a fair metric to really calculate this yes cash flow and earnings are obviously different and the cash flow through operating activities is going to be a lot higher and you can value your business based off of their cash flow especially if it is predictable and it has a good trend again volatility persists so as i say you need to understand exactly what is under the business and i think i very much need to do more work here my solution is that i'm going to use a multitude of different factors to really understand I'm going to look at the assets on the company. Do they have much debt? Do they have high levels of cash? What is that cash as a percentage of the market capitalization or the price to book ratio, the share price compared to the debt? I'm also going to be looking at the price to earnings, obviously. And if they're not able to offer growth of a similar level to that multiple that they're trading at, then perhaps I'm not going to be as interested. If I'm buying a company of a price to earnings ratio of 50 times, but they can only grow their earnings by 5% per year, 
How am I meant to get gains on this? Or furthermore, they could be growing their earnings by 50% per year, but they're trading at a price to earnings ratio of five times. Then I would be very, very interested in the business if their growth is sustainable for the longer term and it's not a short term boost due to a, a black swan event like the pandemic. Cash flow is also important. I want to see predictable, scalable cash flow, and something like that is, again, hard to calculate. But I'm going to compare the cash flow to the price of the business, but I'm going to compare it to the enterprise value. So the, uh, the market capitalization minus the debt plus the cash, and compare, okay, what is the cash flow divided by the market capitalization? What can this really be producing? And then we can look at these kind of estimates, and I'm going to personally use very, very conservative estimates with the idea that, you know what, worst case situation, what could this really be valued at? And that's exactly what I want to follow. There's no point living in hope that they're going to continue to go up. And yes, in the past, I would buy a premium company for a premium price, thinking, well, if they're a high quality company, they'll be able to maintain a high quality price and valuation. But all it takes is one bad earnings report or one negative thing in the media. And suddenly that premium, that investor sentiment drops and you see significant volatility and a loss of your capital. And that is exactly what has happened with Boohoo, hence why I'm underwater by such a percentage. No, I could not have predicted that over the course of a year it'd be down 70%. And I think it is critically undervalued. And I think this is very much overblown by investors. However, in this situation, Boohoo is a good opportunity to buy, in my opinion. But again, I could have mitigated the damage taken to my portfolio with effective use of capital, but also knowing the fair value of a company. And in that case, I may not have been buying as much. I have learned that I'm going to value companies on a much more dedicated basis and that really I should be a lot more careful and hold a little bit more cash before really buying the dip. Knowing the fair value of a business is very, very important. And when you know that fair value, you know exactly when it's time to buy or when it might be time to sell, especially if you think they aren't going to be growing as fast as their valuation. If you'd like to see last year's video of my greatest mistake, then click the card at the top right of the video. Thank you for watching. I'm Osborne Foreman. Have a fantastic day.